Isha here, and at SHOT Show, SHOT Show 2020, Arms of America announced that a semi-automatic only civilian version of the Polish military's KBK WZ-96C Mini Burial will be imported to the USA this year as a pistol chambered for 5.56 millimeter NATO and uh, this is a really cool news both from a collecting front and a shooting front and I uh, thought we'd just kind of talk a little bit about it since we've been doing quite a bit with the Archer and really Polish Kalashnikovs in general and of course as soon as possible we will give you a shooting review and analysis of the gun and uh, given our past experiences with uh, the Archer a few different rifles we uh, do expect pretty good stuff so um, you know we've done history videos I don't want to go into that much here what they're bringing in is known as the mini Burial S M1 pistol and very much as far as I know, it is Burial, not Barrel. That is because, for one thing, it is spelled Burial, B-E-R-Y-L. And for another, it's named after the element Beryllium. This is a common Polish Luxnik FB Radium naming convention. So Beryllium is what it's named after, hence Beryl. The element is not pronounced Beryl, Beryl, um, Berylum, Beryl, I can't say it, Berylum. <laughs> Much like the WZ-88 was named after Tantilium, it was named the Tantal. And that's a good place to start. The Tantal was developed throughout the 80s. It was a long process. It was not, a lot of people like to call it an AK-74, but really, it wasn't necessarily. It was Poland's own effort, but it was chambered for 545. After nearly a decade, it was finally ready for adoption and was put into production. But literally just a year after it was finally adopted, communism started to crumble in Eastern Europe and subsequently Poland's communist government would fall so the military would continue with their initial orders for the WZ-88 Tantal but as soon as possible they canceled future orders and then quickly they would transition over to 556 declaring 545 obsolete beginning in the early 90s Circle 11, as it still was at the time, did a pretty hasty rechambering of the Tantal to 5.56 NATO. This was the WZ-91, which didn't go much of anywhere. But when the Polish military was looking to join NATO, it decided it needed a new assault rifle chambered for the NATO cartridge. This led to the pre-production series in 1995 for testing of the Brio. Things went well because it was based on the already tested Tanto platform, but updated. And then it was adopted as the WZ-96, WZ-96A as it were, in 1997. And they actually would initially adopt two versions. A full-length 18-inch barrel rifle, known as the KBS, and a short compact carbine known as the KBK with a 9.3 inch barrel known as the mini barrel. While of course the main issue rifle throughout the Polish military coming into the 21st century was the, the barrel, it did purchase large numbers of the mini barrel for specialist use and these weapons would see combat in both Afghanistan and Iraq. So they have real-world combat history. 
already by 2011, the new name for the company, FB Radom, had produced over 45,000 burial and mini burials for the Polish military, so eclipsing the earlier Tantals. And this allowed them to retire out all of their old WZ-88s. So what Arms of America, the importer, is bringing in is that little one. Now in the past we had the full-size Burial rifle, specifically the WZ-96C variant, the more modernized version. It was imported as the Archer 01 beginning in 2012 and running through 2014 by IO, Royal Tiger. Um, especially version 2 and 3 were very, very good guns, but rather pricey. Back then, they cost, when they first came out, 1400 and that was a with a fixed plastic buttstock and no scope rail. As time would go on, the price would drop and start to include more accessories like the adjustable stock, the scope rail, what have you. But, you know, I own all that. So they, they, they really dropped the product pretty quickly. I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, they were, they were $900, they were $800. Yes, but only when I.O. was blowing them out to get rid of the last ones. When they were still trying to make money, they were at least $1,200. It was only after the 700 or so brought over were sold out that people started to really give them credence and started to really pay big bucks for them on Gunbroker. At the height of the Burial craze, the Archer craze, some went for over $4,000 in light new condition in box. Now, one question that's come up when people saw the mini Burial at SHOT Show was, oh, Radom USA is back. No. Radom USA with Ted Marshall as their spokesman said they were going to be importing a Burial rifle and other Radom FB, I should say, firearms like the MSBS or Grot. Unfortunately, they kind of put the cart before the horse and didn't have all their paperwork in order and other things. Plus, there were political machinations over in Poland. Long story short, they ceased to be a, co a corporation in the USA several years ago. Radom USA is gone. What we have instead is the company Arms of America, who has a very good track record with getting stuff in from Poland. They started importing parts kits manufactured by WBP out of Poland, a manufacturer that Jay and I have come to really enjoy. On top of that, the WBP guns have FB Radom barrels in them. Also, other FB Radom components from time to time were used. So, FB and WBP have had a good partnership. And likewise, Arms of America has had a good relationship with FB being the exclusive importer for many of their parts and accessories, such as magazines for the Archer for the last few years. And this project to get fresh... FB Guns in has been going on for well over two years. It's just taken a long time. The people over at FB, according to the folks at Arms of America, they're very nice people, very competent, very diligent, but also very slow moving. And also because they are partially owned by the government and have many government contracts, both military and otherwise, that has to be their priority so when it comes to the exporting to the civilian market it has to take a back seat and then they want to do it right both arms of america and fb because fb feels a little burned and this is me talking here after the whole radom usa not to mention their last other partner was io so let's just say their u.s end of things hasn't been all that positive so i think it you know it's taken a little bit of time to build that, that bridge to establish that trust that they have a competent partner here. And they do, because what Arms of America has done, they did all this behind the scene. They got all the paperwork in. They did all of that first before saying, 
anything to anyone about what their plans were. So when they showed their mini Bereal pistol at SHOT Show, it's done. The paperwork's done. Uh, the ATF approved the gun seen at SHOT Show. Like, that gun actually went to the ATF, went from Poland to the ATF, they approved it, and then they shipped it to the folks at Arms of America. So that gun was approved. So there's not going to be any goofiness from the ATF or U.S. government. And barring any kind of craziness like changing laws here or in Poland, this is happening. They're just finalizing some paperwork for the production contract, getting it going. And um, projection is it should be hitting the market in six to eight months. So little ways off. I'm sure we'd all love to see them by spring, but better to get a realistic projection. So even though we're going to have to wait the better part of a year, what do we have to look forward to? But to really get a feeling for the original Archer, the Burial Rifle, check out our older videos. I will just say that it's a modern Kalashnikov type. It was built from the ground up to fire 5.56. It's not some ad hoc thing done at the last minute. They're well known for their excellent fit and finish. Very high quality chrome lined cold hammer forge barrel. Known for very good accuracy. Just a very pleasant gun to shoot. The original rifle, of course, had to come in as a sporter, meaning it had a single stack magwell that I.O. rather sloppily at times opened up. It also had an 18-inch barrel. The mini burial pistol, because it is a pistol, gets to avoid a lot of that stuff, including 922R, so it can come in as 100% Polish. It is essentially the same gun as the military's WZ-96C mini burial short carbine except of course no full auto selector and no buttstock. Instead of the buttstock it has a sling swivel mounted in the back. We have a Polish 1.0 millimeter stamped receiver with all the proper magwell dimples. The magwell itself is a standard double column magwell accepting 30 and 20 round burial type mags also in Poland they do make an AR-15 magwell adapter which if you pick one up will fit standard dust cover for the most part you have a 9.3 inch chrome lined barrel cold hammer forged with a 1 in 9 twist. One thing that Andrew wanted me to mention. He said he hadn't slept. And his voice was wearing out. And everything. At the shot show. show he, he accidentally said 1 in 6. He meant to say 6 groove. 1 in 9. So conveying that. It is like the rifle. It's a 1 in 9 twist. He and I both lamented. That it would have been nice. If they'd maybe sped it up to 1 in 7. Because of the. 9 inch versus 18 inch barrel, but maybe they know better. Maybe they tried that. Either way, it's it's a 1 in 9. So, there it is. I'm sure if FB is shipping it, it's at least reasonably accurate. It will have the short mini burial gas system. It will come with just your typical polymer basic handguards, much like the Archer rifle. Polish. But you can put mini burial railed handguards on. Just be mindful since it is a pistol, you're not supposed to put a vertical foregrip. Moving forward, we've got the combination front sight gas block. 24 millimeter threads with what appears to be the original muzzle device on. It acts not only as a muzzle brake, it also has a small expansion chamber built into it to ensure good back pressure for reliability. It will have the oversized controls, mag catch, safety. It has the ambidextrous ergonomic pistol grip, which actually I really do like. It, it's big, but it also slim, so I find it's a pretty comfortable grip. Of course, it'll have 
proper Polish markings. No eagle, though. Although, for what people have said, the military gun didn't really have an eagle either, so I'm not sure. Now, the one thing that people are criticizing is the rear sight, specifically what they're calling the Lego block. This is a Picatinny-compatible short rail. This is military. This is how FB Radom makes these for the military. This is not something done for the American market. It is dovetailed on and then either riveted or like screwed into place. Either way, it isn't integral to the block and one way or the other can be removed. So if you absolutely hate it, there will be, a, I'm sure, some way to take it off or replace it with something. But it is military, so you know at least it'll be durable and on point. It also does have a flip-up backup sight, which is neat. Backup iron sight. And it should have either the spots for, or maybe even working, night sights, tritium vials. The only reason I'm saying it may not have the vials is just depending on import stuff. The whole tritium thing can get a little weird. On the other hand, some imports do have the night sight vials, for example, from Switzerland. So it's hard to estimate that stuff. But if, you know, worst case, you could always put luminescent paint in there or get your own little tritium vials. But I get it, that might, that, that might be a little bit of a weird thing, but it is the military, and for us collectors, yeah. And it, as Jay pointed out, I'm obviously to me, uh, sighting systems are not exactly a prime thing, but for him, it didn't seem to bug him. As he pointed out, it is a short pistol. You know, it does have the three rivet rear trunnion. It just doesn't have the tang in the back. You can either... Pop the swing swivel off and put on an arm brace, which will probably be what I'll do. Because to me, a lot of the modern arm braces like the SBA-4 look quite a bit like the Polish stock. But you can always SBR it. You could um, either just drill a hole in the back and mount a stock type like from CNC Warrior on there. Or if you want to go whole hog, you can pop the pistol trunnion out. The rivet holes are there. Pop a full standard burial trunnion in the back and then re-rivet. Honestly, not a very hard thing to do for anyone with a little bit of uh, time to do a little riveting. And then bada-boom, you're in business. The barrel is already at the proper length. It's already threaded, so no goofiness like we saw on the Arsenal Sam 7 Cape 01 pistol where it's extended with a fake something and no threads the the barrel end is good to go and again this will take standard mags and other standard components i think even if i wasn't a polish fan this would still excite me new imports are great but as much as jay and i have enjoyed our archers it's finally great to get the little brother we are definitely pre-ordering as far as price you know it's hard to give an exact price until these hit the street. But what Arms of America is saying right now, MSRP, give or take, estimate, mid-1100s. So let's just say 1150 Is it cheap? No. But considering what people have been paying for used archers, and that the equivalent pistol of, of similar high quality from Arsenal the Sam 7K44 that has the barrel work done is at least 1150 and sometimes 1250 And considering that even the cheaper alternatives, which I'm not knocking them, like the, the Romanian Draco, are six to 700 now, knowing the prices of Polish stuff now and just the prices of stuff in general, Frankly, I wasn't wanting to pay it, but I was expecting something more in the fifteen to sixteen hundred range. So I was pleasantly 
surprised with the price. I mean, would I have liked it to be 900 Of course I would. Who doesn't like things to be cheaper? But, yeah, 11 something sounds fair to me. Especially considering the hard work. And also, these will be coming in in small numbers. This is not going to be a, a century job where they bring over 5,000 at a time. This is going to be more of a 100 to 200 pieces in a batch. Meaning these will probably sell out the first couple of batches quite quickly. Beyond that, Arms of America isn't making any kind of game changer predictions or things like that. They're just saying, hey, this is a nice gun. It comes from the real FB Radom. This isn't Pioneer Arms. This isn't even WBP. I'm not saying WBP is bad, but this is the real FB Radom, formerly Circle 11. This is their current military AK. This will probably be their last AK because they're going over the MSBS, the Grot. And even they've said this is as far as they can take the AK design. This is as advanced as the AK is likely uh, likely to get. I'm sure if the Mini Brill does well, if all goes well, laws don't change, this hopefully will be the start of a beautiful thing, um, a new line. I know they you know, don't want it to stop here. We might actually see other FB products come in the future, but that's, that's, that's in the future. I'm just mentioning it because I know people will ask, well, what about a rifle? What about the Grot? You know, I'm sure they would love to do that. I'm sure they're, they're mindful. I'm sure they've asked about a lot of things. So at this point, kind of one of those, just be grateful <laughs> and thankful and enjoy what we have. So with that, I will, uh, call it a day if you have any questions please uh, please let us know and we'll do our best to answer if we can or pass it along we'd love to hear your feedback and comments and as always if you'd like to help support the channel please check out the link to our patreon page <laughs>